Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, so we're here in the Model Factory making a video to show you what the final buildup of the Revell Bronco looks like. Um, now, this here is the kit that we have been building. And um, just to start, this is an absolutely fantastic kit. Beautiful, beautiful kit. I really feel like Revell knocked it out of the park with this one. Um, it, it goes together so nice. Uh, all the parts require very minimal cleanup. Um, just builds up into an absolutely beautiful, beautiful kit. Um, so I, I highly recommend that you get one. Um, if you have one, build it. If you haven't, you know, got one in your stash, then then go get one. Um, I know there's a little bit of uncertainty right now with Revell and you know what's going on there and, and all those things. Um, I think for the most part we're going to be okay. Uh, we're just hoping that it's sooner rather than later that the Revell products get back into production again. Um, and, and hopefully, you know, the, the prices stay pretty, you know, reasonable and competitive uh, and whatnot. Um, but anyway, uh, with that out of the way, let me take you down to the bench here and show you guys what we did. All right, here is the Bronco in all of its glory. And uh, we are happy with how this one turned out. I'm really excited about it and um, just, you know, think that uh, this thing went together, went together perfect. Um, so we'll just start with the exterior, take you on a little tour of that, tell you all the stuff that we did, and then we'll, you know, move into the uh, interior bits and, and so on. Um, so we'll just give you a real quick spin here. Uh, we painted this thing with the Craft Acrylic uh, Ceramico. It's the medium foliage green, um, and uh, think it's a cool color. Really like the color, how it turned out. Um, wheels and tires are from the uh, Ravel. Um, it is the uh, Jeep Rubicon kit, and um, we've got uh, those replaced and then a spare as well. Um, we dirtied those up with uh, some, um, you know, MIG pigments and things like that just to, to kind of make it look like it, you know, it's been, been on the trail a little bit. Um, added a little bit of dusting um, along the bottom um, of the vehicle there, um, just on the sides a little bit, again, just to add to that, you know, uh, trail you know, used look or whatever. Um, and then uh, we have got the spare tire there on the back. Um, we did get some, uh, you know, decals here from the decal stash. Um, these are just some, you know, state decals, um, you know, that from like different places that they've been to, um, that they've traveled in, in this vehicle. Um, on the back here, uh, we do have a license plate, um, and then around that license plate, if you see, we've got, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the little license plate bracket that goes around it there. That is a ProTech part. Um, that is a photo etch part that you can get that uh, looks pretty cool. Um, the, uh, the little uh, spare tire cover here, um, now this thing, oh, well, it came off, let me uh, put it back on. This thing does spin out like this, um, which is really cool. And uh, one thing I did is this uh, Jeep Rubicon tire that's on there is quite heavy, and so it forces this, uh, you know, bracket here to kind of hang out and not um, sit up like it should when it's against the vehicle. Um, so what I did is, if you look right here, I just put in, I used a little piece of metal wire, and I put in a little bracket there. Um, that holds this into place. It just kind of locks in and keeps it locked into place and everything and um, looks really cool and uh, keeps it nice and straight and aligned when it's there. Um, I did do some um, aluminum tubing for the exhaust. Um, the exhaust tips here um, on both sides and I just like how that looks over the you know plastic exhaust um, that comes with the kit. It just looks a little more realistic. Um, we went with the uh, bare metal foil on the trim there, um, just to, you know, I, I was debating on doing it black or with bare metal foil, so I decided to go the bare metal foil route, really happy with how that turned out. Um, and then of course these fender flares, um, if you guys have been watching my videos, those are from Fireball Model Works. Um, he does some fantastic resin parts and does a whole lot of resin, um, you know, build-up parts, extra parts, and custom things for um, this Revell Bronco kit specifically. Um, so I, I did get these from Fireball Model Works, and they're absolutely fantastic resin pieces, really no cleanup. 
Um, only work I had to do was trimming out the fenders on the Bronco so that these would fit on there um, and everything. And uh, they just, you know, go right on there, fit the contours of the body perfectly. Um, and they look really, really cool. Um, and then uh, on the front here, uh, if you guys see this bumper, um, this is a completely scratch built bumper. Um, I made that from some styrene rod, uh, both some square rod and some uh, round rod, um, and, and put those together, just kind of shaped it all out to get the look that I was wanting. Also the rear bumper, um, that is a custom uh, scratch built as well. Uh, I just kind of wanted it to have a little more of an off-road bumper on it um, than just the, you know, the plain kit stock bumper um, that was with it. Uh, we blacked out the grill um, just to match the rest of the black on the vehicle and um, everything. Uh, threw a little, you know, for sale sign in the front window. Um, let's see, there we go. Threw that little for sale sign in there just for a little bit of visual interest, you know, to like the, uh, the stickers on the back window. Um, but yeah, that's the um, exterior of the vehicle and um, looks really, really cool. Um, and then we can uh, take off uh, this rear. Well, uh, we can take off the roof there and you guys can see what this thing looks like if you're running it open topped. And, um, you know, looks really, really cool, I think. Um, I like I like how it looks both ways, so I'm kind of torn on what's the best way to display this. Um, do I want to display it with the top on or, you know, with the top off um, and just sitting next to it? So, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but that's what it looks like with the top off. Uh, let me take you inside the interior on this and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here is the interior, and um, we decided to go with kind of a brown uh, leather interior just to kind of contrast with the green. Um, I like the two colors and, and feel they pop well together. So we painted these seats to, to mimic like a brown leather, um, and the kit does come with these uh, sort of plaid or houndstooth decals um, that you can put in the seats, and um, they're nice because they're just black and, and clear, so they can kind of go over whatever color you would like. And it really adds um, just, you know, some cool detail to the interior. Um, these are the ProTech Five Point Racing Harnesses that I used on the front seats, if I can get that to focus. There you go. Um, and the reason I went with those instead of just stock, uh, you know, seat belts is this is, since it's an off-road, you know, vehicle, um, if you're going to be out off-roading, doing any kind of, you know, climbing or anything, uh, I know this isn't like an extreme climbing vehicle, but if you're going to be doing any climbing, it would be a good idea to just have these racing harnesses to hold you in your seat real well so you're not just bouncing all over the place. So that was kind of my thought process behind that and why I went with that. And then I just did standard seat belts on the rear seat here. Um, these are just some, you know, photo etched standard seat belt buckles. Um, and everything that, that I uh, had in my uh, parts stash um, that I used on there. Um, if you guys look at the dash, um, the dash has been painted green. Um, and then uh, right down here at the bottom, you can see those are some under dash uh, gauges um, that are from ProTech, you know, like your oil and you know, your pressure, things like that. Um, so so that's, that's what those, uh, that little area is down there. Um, just add a little bit to it. The rest of the interior is completely stock. Um, no, you know, no added uh, bonuses or anything. Um, I did, uh, let me take that back. I did actually add a bar across the lower part of the roll cage here um, that just acts as an anchor point for the, uh, the, the, the racing harnesses, the shoulder straps. Um, and then I did do some brown flocking on the uh, floorboard um, to simulate, you know, carpeting. Um, and everything so uh, but yeah that's the interior and I really really like how that turned out um, I like the contrast like I said between the the you know, exterior color and the interior color now let's take a look at the engine bay um, did a lot of detail work in here and you guys have seen most of this if you saw my under the looking glass video um, of the engine that's in here um, but I did add some more to it uh, once it was inside the engine bay. Um, we did a lot of the, you know, uh, electrical wiring and, and some of the other plumbing. Um, 
all of these parts in here are our protect parts all of the wiring and plumbing um, so we have you know upper and lower braided radiator hoses with fittings um, we have the heater hoses um, that are the braided lines um, we scratch built a little uh, you know uh, mass flow mass airflow sensor on top of the intake here um, and then use some of the detail wiring you know from that um, this intake uh, is from the Ravel 32 uh, Ford 5 window coupe. Um, it is off of the 5.0 uh, Mustang engine that's in that kit, um, but it, it adapts perfectly to the uh, engine that's in this kit, so we put that on there. Um, we put the uh, valve covers from that as well and the intake manifold. Um, and then uh, we've got the battery, did the you know, positive and negative cables on that, running to their respective points. Um, you know, a little bit of the wiring harness over here on the side. And if I flip this over, uh, we detailed up the uh, brake booster. So we've got the uh, lines running off of that and down um, and everything in there. Uh, and then let me see if I can flip this around and you can see... Um, I don't know if we'll be able to catch this or not, but what I'm trying to show you is we have a, uh, yeah, right down in there. If you look right down in there, you can see we have the uh, flex fan. This is the aluminum photo etch flex fan also um, from ProTech um, that we used in there. And what I'm going to do is, like in all my videos, I'm just going to post a link um, down you know, at the bottom of the video that will show you guys all of the parts that I used on the engine, the interior, and an exterior of this build. Um, so that you guys will, will know what those are in case you want to use them. Um, but yeah, that's the engine. Um, there also will be pictures at the end of this video, so you can you know stay tuned for those, and that'll let you guys see all this model in better detail as well. All right, guys and gals. Well, uh, that is it. That's the final on the Ravel Bronco, and um, I said I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. It's an absolutely beautiful kit, and a pleasure to build it. Um, and I uh, just, you know, hope that you guys enjoyed following along and um, enjoyed, you know, the, uh, the process of the build-up and everything. And um, I'm posting some pictures up, so uh, keep on for that. And um, like I always say, guys, eat, sleep, styrene. Keep building those awesome models, and I will see you all in the next video.